we doing out there, guys? We're going to talk today about target selection and how to find your target zones on um, you know, your potential attack, your potential adversary. So what we're not talking about here is how to actually pick the person that you're going to shoot or the person that you're not going to shoot. What we're talking about is finding those high center of chest, those actual vital zones, potential fight-stopping things we can hit in a fight uh, against a real target. So out here, i got a couple of targets. I've got my... I've got my BC Zone Steel out here, which is a great training tool. Um, and to go with it, I've got my actual um, Ipsic uh, uh, silhouette here. So as you can see, what the BC Zone represents is basically, it's about a 12 by 18 inch uh, piece of steel that's representing what the head is. And if you can see my Sharpie lines here, uh, the Sharpie outline there represents the Charlie Zone. Everything outside of the Sharpie, but still inside the periphery's edge, is, uh, is the Delta Zone. And i got the A Zone right here. Okay, so now, as far as training tools go, and uh, for competition and thing, you know, these silhouettes, these steels are awesome. But uh, a couple things I wanted to get across. So one, uh, I'm about 5'10", 215. Uh, I'm broader in the shoulders um, than average. Uh, so if I hold this silhouette up to my body, I am roughly about the same width from the edge of the target to the edge of the target. Probably I'm a little bit wider than the target. But so that's the actual periphery, the actual end of my body. So if we could go ahead and, uh, and say that's how wide my body is, we can basically take this entire delta zone out of the equation when it comes to an actual vital shot, an actual fight stopping shot. So if we're looking at just the C zone, all right, so if I go ahead and hold that up again, so if we look at the Charlie zone here, when it comes down to my rib cage, realistically, that thing's coming to about right here. It's coming to close to my belly button down here and again to my rib cage. So again, that Charlie zone, while a, a pretty good scoring zone for uh, USPSA um, or, you know, even uh, for IDPA with the down one zone and stuff like that, and a good training tool, a rough assessment of the torso of the human body, it does not really represent an exact vital shot. So now if we use this A zone here, or if you can see on my target, I actually drew about a three inch circle on the face there because when it comes to taking headshots, uh, while this is a, a B zone and this A zone credit card is nice for training purposes and for work and accuracy work on the range, I love it for that. Realistically, when it comes to taking headshots, there's about a uh, about a three inch circle that's centered right on the nose um, that actually represents um, the part of the brain that we can hit and stop the fight immediately. If we get too far outside of that or very far outside of that, we run into the very thick and very tough bone of the forehead, uh, of the jaw. Uh, we run into things like the teeth. Um, and so... Uh, it's very common for people to take shots in the head that are not dead-on shots or they go into the periphery of the skull and not only don't stop the fight uh, immediately, but often don't even uh, influence the attacker, don't even knock the person unconscious from impact, have no immediate effect whatsoever. So that's the main purpose of uh, this video is we want to kind of dispel some of those myths. So realistically, what we're looking at is the A zone on the IPSC is a very good approximation. I like it a lot for training purposes or for using an IDPA silhouette. Uh, centered high in the chest here is about an 8-inch circle uh, that represents our high uh, chest shots. So those are good approximations when we're talking about a target, but now we want to talk about how do we find those on an actual enemy, an actual adversary, an actual attacker, okay? So the easiest uh, way to teach it initially is to talk about the contrast of the head and neck to the shoulder. So the eye is naturally drawn to 90 degree angles because they're high contrast and it's easy for the eye to pick up. So um, if you just look at me, uh, right now. So I've got fairly broad shoulders compared to uh, an average size man, so it makes it a little bit easier. And I'm wearing a tank top right now, so there's nothing that's inhibiting your, your vision too much. So if we look where the head and neck is, we look where the shoulders are, there's a nice vertical 90 degree contrast right there. So that should draw us into this area here. And then we have to know that we need to step that down a couple inches or a few inches to keep those shots high in the chest, but also where the vitals are. If we get too high here, now we start to throw them potentially into the, the musculature of, uh, of the trapezius muscles and up and towards the periphery of the neck and things that we might not actually hit major blood vessels. Okay guys, so I real quick uh, just went and put on my, my Carhartt jacket here to, to show you uh, exactly the point I'm trying to drive home. So this is uh, my typical late fall winter gear in Iowa in the Midwest. This is, uh, you know, bar none, the, the most common type of thing that you're going to see. So just put on my coat, put on a regular stocking hat. Now granted, it's like heat index of I think like 105 or 108 today, so I'm sweating my ass off. But uh, um, so we take, uh, we're take adding that coat on right there, and all of a sudden 
all those distinctive lines and that distinctive head, neck, and shoulders contrast that we could see when I was just wearing my tank top uh, become much more difficult to find. So as we talked about um, a, a second ago, when we're talking about uh, that BC zone is, is a good approximation of the, the head and torso, and your shots would do well to go there, but it does not exactly represent the vital shots or that high, um, high torso, high chest shot that we would expect um, fairly significant damage and fight stopping capabilities or fight stopping wounding to happen. So now you take, uh, you take this Charlie zone and you apply it to when I'm wearing a coat here. There's a significant amount of the coat that is not even uh, directly on my body. And this coat isn't big. It's not too big by any stretch of the imagination. It's about exactly right here. So it becomes immediately uh, that much more difficult. Let me add that. And so now we start having things like, uh, like my hood here. If I was wearing a neck gaiter, uh, it would make it even more difficult. Or if I was some sort of yuppie queer bait millennial and I was wearing a scarf, it uh, becomes that much more difficult to see the contrast of my neck. Uh, in my face um, and so now boil all that down into it and here's a, an A zone that I cut out of one of my Ipsic silhouettes right there so boil it all down and this is what you're trying to hit all right these are your actual A zone your actual fight stopping uh, potential fight stopping wound areas of the body right there all right so this is if I'm facing straight on now we can go ahead and we can kind of exacerbate that so if I'm facing uh, shaded directly um, you know 90 degrees away from a target right here uh, so this A zone uh, we would expect a bullet to go through the arm and uh, potentially through the humerus and into the rib cage. which if you didn't know, that's why uh, part of the protocol for the FBI test involves uh, a significant amount of penetration. More than is enough for a straight on shot is because there's the realistic possibility besides barriers and things that if the body is shaded away, now the round potentially has to go through quite a bit of flesh and bone um, and, and things like that and muscular tissue to actually get to the vital part of the body. So the biggest thing I wanted to bring home with that is um, that one, you need to train um, or at least be familiar with uh, realistic um, types of targets. You can go to like LE targets and buy all sorts of different ones right there that are an approximation of what actual people um, you know, look like. Uh, so you can get uh, some, some first-hand experience seeing and shooting at those. Um, you can do things like force on force is absolutely great. Uh, now this isn't me telling you to only train on human silhouettes or, or anything that uh, could remotely be construed as me telling you to practice killing people, but for somebody who is serious about uh, not only self-defense, but of any sort of military, law enforcement, self-defense, home defense type of shooting, um, you have to have uh, the ability to uh, distinguish target zones and the, the, you have to be able to recognize that the target is not going to look uh, at all um, like your silhouettes do or like what you're used to practicing on. So you have to be able to pick out um, the zones on that. And so kind of the other, the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about with that was um, when we take all this into account, it sort of dispels a lot of things that I, I see in here. And you guys probably see in here this too. Hell, you might even be the people that say it, but I, I get this all the time when it comes to things that I did overseas. Um, you know, now it's no secret that um, I fired my weapon. I, I've shot real people in, in real combat and I'm not saying that makes me uh, you know, a special like, expert of the world, just going over is not enough. You have to experience the things, but you have to have the mindset and the ability to take your experiences and glean the, the critical information and see uh, the relevant facts in that. Just going over is not enough. But um, over there, people wear very loose-fitting clothes, by and large, man dresses, things like that. Um, they wrap their head in various kinds of um, dishdashes, kafias, um, you know, Shemags, you know, whatever the hell you want to call it. There's a different name every day for that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, when people are always like, oh, was it that close? Why don't you just go for the headshot or shoot him in the face? And I was like, yeah, it's easier to shoot people in the face when they're on the ground or right in front of you. Um, you know, they're not moving anywhere. But uh, when a guy's moving around, he's wearing things uh, on his face. It's very difficult to see what's going on. For example, I shot guys in the summer who were wearing um, sweatsuits. It's Iraq, it's August. The guy was wearing a purple sweatsuit. I don't know why, um, but, um, you know, takes away a lot of the, the target area when it comes to that. And the, the last thing to take into account besides the clothing and besides, uh, you know, the mindset and all that is, is something as simple as take a look around America today and what do you see? What does everybody look like today? They're fat. They're all fucking fat. America is obese right now. Poor people in America are fat, which is a huge deal. But uh, now you take this, uh, you take this BC zone, which roughly approximates the torso and uh, and close to my vital areas, and, and this this A zone here. And now you take somebody who instead of 5'10 and 215 is now 5'10, 250, 260, 280, 300 pounds. So now you get a person who is much much larger, a much bigger surface area, and potentially that much easier to hit.
but who does not have that much bigger, or maybe does not have a bigger uh, amount of surface area for his vital organs at all compared to a normal person like me. So just food for thought, guys. Tell us what you guys think. Remember, only the hits count, and you can never miss fast enough to catch back up.